find it difficult to get the people you're trying to lead to go in the direction you want them to go? Difficult to see eye to eye? Just difficult to get people on board, especially when it's urgent and important. I'm talking to your parents. I'm talking to your lab technicians, phlebotomists, clinical lab scientists, supervisors, managers, lab executives, this post is for you. I want you to see yourself as a leader, someone that can make a difference, someone that can lead change. Think about how you can lead change at home as a parent as a sibling, at work, as a member of the team, as a supervisor, manager, and an executive, leading or even getting people to change course is usually not easy. And so it's important to understand how to enact change and a positive response, especially in a crisis when things are urgent and important. I know how difficult that is. I work in process improvement and change management, and I found it difficult, even for myself over the years. And I've worked with different lab leaders who have tried to enact changes. Many times you could have the change, but so many times you don't sustain these changes. And as a process improvement personnel, I've actually worked to make major changes in the hospital, hospital-wide change. And many times I've made these changes, I've actually gone back to find that after a month or so, people have actually gone back to what they're used to doing. People just have amnesia. And they would say, well, when was this change made? I didn't know about it. And so over the years, I've developed a method to ensure that I can make changes that will be sustained. And I wanna share that with you. And I know it's important, especially now, when we're making changes that needs to be done urgent and needs to be sustained, especially in this pandemic, because there are so many things that are moving and moving fast. And so I wanna share this with you. And I'm gonna share this with you and you can use it not only for urgent changes, not only in a crisis, but this can be used in any kind of change effort. And it can be used at home and in different situations. The first thing that you would need to do is communicate. Communicate what is beneficial to the people who are involved in the change. And I know you're probably gonna say, I know, I know. But how many people are effectively communicated whenever there's a change and communicating what is beneficial to the people who are involved. And I'm gonna use an example in the lab, say for instance, microbiology. Microbiology at the beginning of the pandemic, sometimes depending on what hospital you are, would have most of the testing. And for maybe just one area in microbiology would have so much to do and one ear may not have as much. And so there could be that temptation to say it's not fair or why am I overworked? So how do you communicate instead of taking for granted how people are feeling? It's important to have that dialogue and it's not I'm using microbiology as an example, but this can be used even in an area that's not even doing as much work. But for microbiology, it's important to 
communicate something that's really positive and ben beneficial. For one, it's great that we are, we have the expertise in the lab to be able to do this testing during this crisis. That people have, basically the doctors are looking to us to provide the results. And it's so great that we are able to contribute in such a big way. We are able to use our expertise, we are able to contribute, and we should really be proud. And how proud are you? You may have people initially who are hesitant, but it's so important to highlight what's positive, what's great, how how they, they're contributing. And I'm sure as medical technologists, clinical lab or scientists, you're there to contribute, to make a big difference. And we're making a difference. We have the expertise, we're contributing, and we're so proud. Phlebotomy could be similar. The pride that they should have, that they have the expertise, that they are actually contributing to collect the specimen in order to get the results back to the provider during this time. But then there's a second piece in the communication that's really important. And that is be the first as a leader to communicate. You want to be the first to communicate what's positive. You want to be able to communicate this to your team as soon as the information comes out. So you're going to communicate what you know. You may not know everything, but you're going to communicate what you know. And you're going to be able to do it to, when you're setting that positive tone before they start getting the negative and distorted information. So you're going to be the source of positive, factual, as much as you know, information. So you're basically setting the tone for your team. So you're setting that tone of positivity, of contribution, of service. They're fulfilling a purpose and a function. So that's so important in setting that tone for your team when it comes to communication. The second step is being available. Being available to your team. And I know it's difficult, especially in the lab where people are trying to social distance and people are working from home. But being available as physically as much as possible, but if you can't be available physically, try to have someone that they trust to be there. So you wanna be available for questions so that you can help to have that positive voice. So whenever there is their apprehension or uncertainty and you, can, you have information that you can share, be available to share information because information is gonna be coming up over a period of time as you go. So be, a, be there to answer questions, be there to reassure, and if you can't be there, have someone that they trust be there. Another thing, if you can't be there, let them know your schedule. So make sure your schedule, you're transparent with your schedule. Let them know when you're gonna be there, when you can't be there. And also, leave a way in which they can contact you either by phone or email. So being available is gonna be really important for you to be there as a leader. Availability is applicable, as I said, as a leader in the lab, leading at home with your kids, if they know where you are, especially in times of uncertainty, in times of a crisis, it does help them when they can pick up the phone or find a way to get you or you have someone there that they trust. Next thing is being a role model. That's so important. So you need to model the way. You need to set the tone that you want your team to follow. 
So being that role model is how do you deal with the anxiety? How are you dealing with stress? What are you, what is the, like I say, tone that you are trying to give to your team? Are you gonna um, model the way in, in being proud about what you're doing in terms of your contribution? Are you gonna be scared? Are you gonna be say, be one of those naysayers or are you gonna be a positive role model? So as a role model, you have it's important to walk the walk. So if you put changes in place, say a new procedure in place, try that out. See how it's working. See if there's any glitches that you need to um, address. Is there any glitches that would cause people to take shortcuts? So go through any new process or procedure, and if you can't do it, have a senior leader to do that. That's one way of walking the walk. Another way of walking the walk would be if you put something in place and I think I'm going to use an example that I experienced, and that was actually with phlebotomy, where phlebotomy, although they're used to going up to draw patients in isolating unit, there's a lot of apprehension for especially the first group of people to draw on COVID units. So what was putting in place as a good example of, um, of walking the walk was to ensure that they felt safe um, go through another set of training to make sure that they're actually using PPE appropriately. And not only going through the training as hands-on, but to actually be on the unit with them so you could shadow, observe, to ensure that they're doing it safely. And just being there with them and being able to walk the walk with them Tell them that you're there for them. You're there with them. You're willing to do what they are doing. So it shouldn't be that scary. And that was really helpful. It helped a lot of people who were apprehensive to feel comfortable that you're not going to let them do something that you're not willing to do. And another example of role model is what, what sacrifices are you making? Are you going to ask them to make certain sacrifices that you're not willing to make? Say, for instance, scheduling. There's going to be a lot of different schedule, scheduling changes for areas that don't do as much work and some people are doing more. You're probably going to make different adjustments. Are you willing to adjust your schedule? So it's so important to be that first person to make any sacrifice that's involved. I think of my organization where they're asking each area in order to keep people and not to have people lose their job, they ask for people just take one day off. And are you willing to take that day off with your staff? So that's so important. Do not ask your staff to do anything that you're not willing to do. And so that's role modeling. Another way to role model is to round. Go around and find out how things are going. Use that as an opportunity to answer questions. So the next thing is encourage. Encourage and monitor encourage and monitor so basically it would encourage and monitor is basically looking at how are you rewarding are you rewarding the things that you want to see or are you rewarding situation that you don't like to see so if you are encouraging people to either gossip tattletale come to your office and create a lot of stress then you're basically encouraging stress. So how do you reward the things that you want to see and the things that you don't want to see not reward those things? I'm going to, there, uh, there are so many examples. And I use gossip and tattletale as one, which is a negative example. Like 
if you don't want tattletale and gossiping, then you don't encourage it. But a positive example, especially I'm using COVID right now with COVID as a crisis. Say for instance, you want to encourage innovation. You want to encourage, um, you know, as I scientific innovation or scientific discovery as that's one of our goals. If you see a technologist come to you with a pattern of results during the COVID and say, I'm seeing this pattern with different patients. Instead of ignoring it, look at it. Review it with a fellow or a faculty and see if it's real because it could be a pattern, especially with COVID. There's so much that we don't know enough. So that would be great if one of your technologists saw something that's important. So you move it forward to your faculty and they could start talking to other hospitals to see if this is something, a trend that they're seeing. And if that's true, that's, you start, you celebrate. You celebrate with the technologist or that identify this pattern. And not only celebrate with that technologist, but move it forward. Move it up to hospital leadership and say, this is what we found. So you're celebrating the things that you want to see. Another thing could be just celebrating the fact that your team was willing to take on extra work. For microbiology, they may be the only lab in that region that's doing testing and you, were, you took on extra work from other labs. Celebrate that. So you're basically encouraging or rewarding the behaviors that you want to see. If, for instance, there's one group had to go to another lab to support that lab, celebrate. Celebrate phlebotomists who had to go on the units to draw blood. Tell them how courageous they are. And that's another example that with microbiology in terms of highlighting during that communication, highlighting their expertise, letting them know that we are so proud that we had the expertise where they have to depend on phlebotomy to collect patients in order to monitor these COVID patients. So you're celebrating them. And when you're celebrating, you're validating that initial communication, that positive communication that you said how proud you were, that we had that expertise that we were able to contribute in such a way. So we're celebrating the expertise, we're celebrating our con contribution. And when you're doing that, what you're doing, you're encouraging other people to act. You encourage other people in the, on the team to say, this is what we need to do. This is what we need to focus on. And even for people who are hesitant at first, that's how you get people on board, on board with a change that you're actually celebrating and reinforcing the outcome that you want to see. And, you know, there's so many things that can be celebrated now in the crisis. People who participate who helped at the command center, for example, people who help with masks, making masks. You know, there are just so many things, people who support another lab. So celebrate as much as possible. And it reminds me of a quote that says, where focus goes, energy flows and results shows. So focus on the thing that you want the energy to be. You focus on that, that's what your team will focus. That focus on positivity, your team, the energy will be positive energy and you'll see the results that you want to see. And so I just spoke about communicating in a way that's beneficial to the people who are involved in that change so that they can see what's beneficial. Do it in a very, be one of the first 
to communicate as a leader, lead to, with communication. So you're co communicating what's positive. And so it, you're there, so all the, that ne ne negative is, they already have positive information. Be available, role model, and encourage and monitor. And you may not realize, but that actually spells out care. And so it's so important that even if you're gonna follow these four steps, don't just go through it in a ritualistic way and you know, okay, I'm gonna communicate, let me just tell them. And I'm gonna be available if I can. And let's try to see if I can role model this thing and encourage, give out a few certificates. The thing is about people, people can actually see through people who are not genuine. And so it's important to do this with CARE. And it's deliberate that I use the acronym CARE to follow this four-step method when it comes to making change in a crisis or just making change and sustaining change. So it's so it's important. So a lot of people may say, you know what? I don't know. I would really want to do this, but maybe it's too late because I was not there at first. I didn't communicate effectively. And then my team, there was a lot of negativity on my team because I did not lead through communication, lead through positive information or you know, I was not, I did not encourage, but it's not too late. It's not too late to encourage. It's not too late to and, um, lead through positive communication or being available. And especially now with there's so many changes that are taking place, especially in the lab, there's a move now to a lot of antibody testing. I'm sure that coagulation is going to start getting even more. There's a focus on um, coagulation testing or even it's probably going to move into the monitoring phase. Hematology. Um, so therefore, things are actually moving in phase with antibody testing ramp ramping up. It's so important to start by leading with communication, being available, go through this whole um, four steps especially encouragement when it comes to celebrating different wins. As I said, it's easy. One of the things that people could easily do is just go through the checklist, but that's kind of a mistake that you would make if you just go through the checklist without caring. You know, one thing I'd want to ask you to do once you're done listening to this um, video is to pull out a piece of paper and list your team members, whether it's gonna be your team members at work or your household, and write down what you care about. Before you start going through that four step, write down what you care about. Do you care and why you care? Why you care? Do you care because you want them to succeed? You want your team to win? You want your team to understand their expertise? You want your team to grow? Whatever it is, write that down. And having that care about your team hopefully will propel you to do this in a caring way. And so I'm gonna leave that with you, hopefully with following these four steps will help to build that culture of pride, that culture of contribution, that culture of um, expertise, that culture of growth, of wanting to do more. And hopefully that will help and it will help, help you to sustain some of the changes that you're trying to make. So thank you and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm going to have a lot of new videos coming up that will encourage us as lab leaders and not only help encourage us at work but will encourage us to utilize these skills in any era of our lives 
I want you to subscribe and also want you to follow my newsletter. I put that in the comments below and that will give you a lot of updates on what I am up to and things that you can learn from, things that I'd want to share with you moving on. So have a great time until you see me again. Bye-bye. Talk to God about you And I ain't even met you yet Everybody's waiting on you